Welcome to the Think Bamboo podcast. I'm your host, JJ, and our guest today is Laure Julien, artist and designer, works with Bamboo. She's founder of the studio Take, located in Paris, France. She studied fashion and learned bamboo on site on the island of Japan from Japanese bamboo masters. Welcome, Laure. Thank you. Thank you for having me, JJ. Great having you on board today here. We have three main topics with Laura. One is the she does um, um, research and development, development of the use of bamboo in France in order to make it more accessible to European uh, designers. And this will be our first topic. Second topic is researching Japanese bamboo basketry in Tokyo and on the countryside. And the third topic is the challenges in, in Europe, France, regarding luxury art and, and craft regarding bamboo. So um, here we go. Right yeah. now, we, yeah, right now we're in Laure's um, studio uh, in, in Paris, I think. So um, we did yeah. some uh, bamboo in the background, too. Um, so <laughs> um, you, you did um, the, or you're currently doing research regarding French bamboo, Laure. How's that going? Yeah. It's uh, it's going good. So yeah, I so I, after I went to Japan and learned bamboo craft. I'll talk a little bit more about it later. I'm back to France and I realized that we don't really use um, bamboo weaving and uh, that uh, this uh, craft and knowledge is almost non-existent in Europe. So I really wanted to develop that. And um, I saw a lot of designer who are interested in the in the material, but it's kind of not very easy to access uh, in France. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the uh, Bamboo's Red de Seven, and they have like really amazing bamboo. And I thought that like this is everything is uh, available to make it as um, as good as in Asia. But there's just one thing that is missing: is how to dry the material. So the I'm and uh, the knowledge of drying material, because in basketry, this is very important, have a um, proper uh, material to have it dried. So I'm involved in a research that uh, um, we have like five different labs in Paris that will work together to find a better solution that is uh, really made for France and for the climate of France and the, the species uh, that grows in France to make it available and uh, ready to use for many designer and artisans who wants to work with bamboo in Europe. So um, when you, you say, I have two questions already. When you say the species of bamboo that grows in France, is it a uh, philostachis? Or uh, are there various, mostly philostaches, right? What I'm using is mainly uh, philostaches. I'm still researching on like which one is the best uh, for me because I have several queries. I need to have, an example, long distance between two nods. Uh, it mm -hmm. needs to be quite thick bamboo, as you can see in the background. So like around eight centimeter diameter is to be quite easy to cut because I'm mm -hmm. uh, cutting everything by hand. I can show you the, the tool. Uh, yeah, that would be great. Let's see the tool. Wow, this is a huge knife. I'm doing mainly everything with this this tool. I'm cutting it into like uh, small uh, strips. I have some here, for example, this like. And this is like a specific knife to cut bamboo from Japan, or what's the story there? Yes, yes, this is the knife I got uh, my master when I was in Japan. So it's specifically made for bamboo. You have one part that is uh, very uh, sharp, and mm -hmm. this one is a bit less sharp. So it depends uh, which, which uh, type, like how the process. You have different. Uh, uh, stages and at the beginning you cut more with this um, big part and then to be more and more precise you use this part and uh, mm -hmm. this is actually like you have to, you can see maybe this signature here from yeah, some engraving. Uh, who made it in Japan so it's like very precious to me <laughs> like my my most precious uh, tool you cannot find wow. it in Europe but it's awesome because you can take it with you probably not in the plane but you can like travel with it it's it's not yeah. huge it's like handy yeah Exactly. Yeah. yeah, I've done. Uh, this is why I'm. I can also do like a lot of uh, art residency. I can move around. I just need one suitcase where I can put all my tools and uh, very nomad. That's good today. Important. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And, and bamboo is and, everywhere, so I can use the local bamboo and just bring my tools. Exactly. We have bamboo on every continent. Regarding the you. you um, 
said before, uh, the one thing is to get really dry bamboo, right? So um, what are we talking? How dry does it have or should it be so you can use it to make like art and, and craft? How is, is it like 5% humidity or are we talking about less? Oh so, yeah, this is something that I'm still researching on. I don't have like a, yet like a proper, like um, very specific number on that. <laughs> this is something that I'm doing by like uh, trying and, and testing because this is, this not, this hasn't really been done in Japan. Uh, they have some um, industries, but it's very artisanal uh, where they dry the bamboo and I'm sure they have more knowledge about it, uh, but still it's not like, it's not, yeah, it's very artisanal the way they dry it. They have ovens and uh, they don't put any like a uh, um, digital, like, um, um, like input, like uh, how many. Uh, um, and they just do it by feeling almost. Uh, yeah. Yeah. By knowledge, I think that they've been doing that for a long time. So that's why I'm actually going back to Japan from January uh, for three mm -hmm. months. I will keep learning about bamboo weaving, of course, but I will also uh, enter like this uh, company and learn from them how they, they dry the bamboo so I can import that in France and uh, make it work. <laughs> wow. And And yeah. is it like, I mean still like intrigued do you think they they is it going to be like cooking in a pan or something because it's or, or are there like bigger parts you think of of drying okay which method they used to dry yeah because i mean you know like the the classic methods are like or, or you submerge them a few days or weeks under water or you put them in a huge like tube where they close it and they they cook it with steam or uh, you can or and they're like various methods right but thinking of of what you're using you're using more like smaller parts you don't need like the six meter a huge uh, elements right that depends that depends because sometimes we do think things that are like really long if we want to use like one small uh, stripes but that have a lot of like i don't know curves and can be uh, easily few meters long so what they do in japan they have two main techniques the first one is to put it directly on the fire and mm -hmm. as uh, put it on the fire and then they um they wipe it this is uh, very artisanal it takes a lot of uh, time and energy and the other uh, technique is by steam uh, yeah, steam okay. oven and that's the one that uh, i'm studying and try to do in france interesting because yeah humidity probably is different a little bit depending where you're in France um, than I could imagine than Japan, which is like a big island I'm surrounded mm -hmm. by the ocean, right? Um, yeah. Yeah, so that's <laughs> and why then... I want to like have something in France that is a little bit more uh, precise on the like uh, humidity and the mm -hmm. heat and more than just like having this uh, oven with the, with the fire and that's a big, uh, big tube in Japan. It's like just that and it works really well. And I think they know, yeah. they have this knowledge of like how is the weather and how they should uh, steam it according to all these elements. But I think in France, it might be a little bit more difficult to uh, put that uh, knowledge and uh, it takes a long time. So I would like to have something that is uh, quite independent to the uh, surrounding weather and uh, more not like technological but some and yeah to, so that we can really Standards. like yeah and i don't know it would be cool do you have some of, of your art craft you can share with us maybe yeah, yeah sure to get an so, idea what you've been you've been transforming bamboo i have a few things i've been doing things for um with leather so i come from fashion so i have this uh this knowledge of uh, leather and also a little bit ceramic and i want to use uh, bamboo with leather because there is a lot of similarities in the way it's cut the way it's transformed is really interesting so for example this is like a bag that has a handle in uh, bamboo and inside you can also see that uh, there is different we will see it really but there's different holes and then you yep. can Choose the height, like there's also a little bit of like design research and functionality behind it. So that's more like modular. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I have things uh, that are more like um, just like weaving. This is mm -hmm. uh, with the uh, French wow. bamboo. So you see, this is with the bamboo that is originally yellow. So when it's going to dry, um, mm -hmm. it's going to keep the same color. But the problem I have with the other bamboo is that it's usually green. And then it gets 
brown or like gray or um, yellow, but it's not the way it dries. Sometimes it's not very beautiful color. So this is why if you dr steam dry it, it fixes a nice color. So yeah, and that's mm. one. That one is like so using leather, for example. So you have um, mm. more flexibility. Use it for bags. Interesting. For design. Yeah, I have some embroidery as well. So one of the big challenges is yeah to have it like having the same color or even if it changes the color to have like not like too many di like some control of of how the color is but it doesn't change once yeah. once it's dried yeah. right yeah yeah that's the main uh, thing with drying it's about the color it's also about the um, to it's easier to transport uh mm -hmm. it also doesn't uh get moldy that mm -hmm. easily so that's also yeah. i mean it's also with the color it's easier to cut as well mm -hmm. makes it uh, yeah more even uh when you cut it so yeah it's, it has many but it's really uh, important yeah. advantages and then you can use many different type of uh, bamboo and yeah because now i'm kind of uh, a little bit uh, more uh, restrained by the the type of bamboo i can use i use mainly so this one vivax oreocolis um but yeah it's uh in Japan, they use madake, which is bambuzoides, I think. I think it's bambuzoides. Oh, it's a, I think it's, yeah, I think it's bambuzoides. Uh, and uh, they, so they, they dry it and it's originally it's green. So it becomes like this color. So, yeah. So that's also some kind of thing you can do. Um, and and with, probably the, the classic question, which I can imagine people asking you, are you also working with the black bamboo, which is now kind of highly, uh, a lot of people like, when I talk to people, it's like, oh, I want to get the black bamboo because I heard there is a black bamboo. So uh, I don't know, is this something you've tried already or are going to try in future? Yeah, I tried what they call black bamboo in Japan. I think it's different from the black bamboo in India. Uh, mm -hmm. The black bamboo yeah, in Japan cool. has black, uh, black uh, dots. Mm -hmm. Maybe I'm not sure, but maybe it's uh, quite similar to the Nigra Boriana. But uh, it's not okay. fully black. So it's just some black dots, and it's uh, yeah. But the one from India that is like fully black, I mm -hmm. tried to get it, but it's, for me it was very difficult to get and quite small. Um, mm. so, so I need to. Keep researching and and trying but uh it's yeah for me up until now i'm not really using black bamboo the black one yeah <laughs> trying to find other solution to have black bamboo so yeah. i'm developing some like paint and and dye sorry before you showed me your your uh, notebook with the color research maybe uh, you can share that here now it's pretty impressive where you have all these tribes with the different um, bamboo and and depending what you put on it so you see how it changes over time i just i have it just here so uh okay. in japan when you have black uh you usually have you usually have this in in uh, synthetic dye so it's like really black it's uh it's really nice but it's synthetic and i wanted to use natural dye so i tried this is some example of natural dye but as you can see it's not really even and it's like quite difficult to dye uh, and i tried with paint so for example this is kaki shibu this is a japanese kaki fermented kaki um yeah i tried many different things i have this one that i used for a project this is uh from uh, nuts uh, so it's oh, very nice yeah. and organic but the problem is that it doesn't uh, resist the water so then i huh. tried many different things and like today i was trying it with the, some pigment and some natural like vegetal oil and this is mm -hmm. what i could this is a this is a good mm. i'm happy i can finally find something that this can go in the water and it's no problem and yeah That's so important this, for if it rains yeah, right you don't want to have the the color to disappear then <laughs> yeah, yeah wow. so I, I have a lot of like research <laughs> And we'll see with time. This could be a, an interesting topic uh, in such just to talk about that, I think, with all the data you have there, you know, it uh, could be uh, something interesting to share with other people in future. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'm trying to keep everything a little bit organized so that it's easier to share after. That's why also for the research, I'm working with different labs that also have some norms that uh, then the research can be used for different purposes because we know that uh, in Europe, bamboo is mainly used for construction and for structures. So I hope that my research that will be based on uh, the use of bamboo for design and basketry and uh, luxury craftsmanship and uh, also after we reinvestigate for other fields such as uh, construction. One question regarding the color. Have you tried or considered using color from the pulp, pulpo, um, the fish? I like ink. You know, yeah, yeah, ink from, the, that's yeah. like, they have like dark and, 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 and like bluish yeah. one. Have you tried mm -hmm. that also or? I haven't tried yet, no, but that's a good idea. Huh. I wonder yeah, also yeah. if water, if it uh, will go away or it's not. It's natural. That's one thing yeah, <laughs> we have to test. Interesting. So, yeah, that's a good yeah. uh, idea. Right. Cool. And um, so, okay, so this is like, you're, I feel it's kind of super interesting because you're doing like pioneering work right now, specifically in, in Europe. You got like um, uh, inspiration and, and knowledge from the Japanese bamboo masters, but basically you're doing it obviously with a European mindset, right? So um, basically, you're you're doing something totally new. I don't know. Maybe uh, I know that in in France, there's a few other people who has the knowledge in Japan of bamboo weaving. Mm -hmm. They just don't use it with bamboo. They use it uh, with wood or uh, with rata. I think this is also because bamboo is not that easy to find in Europe. So I hope that my research will help with that. But uh, yeah, apparently for using European bamboo with that knowledge from Japan, I'm one of the first. Um, and also it's, it has been used a little bit in uh, fashion and accessory in the past, but um, there's very, very few examples. So Limited. I hope yeah. my knowledge and my craft can be and have like wider uh, uses, especially for fashion and interior design. I think I saw a luxury handbag. I don't know if it was Dior or or, or Guerlain or but some French uh, luxury brand where the handbag had like the top part, uh, like um, in in bamboo. I remember, but I don't remember what brand or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, Gucci is doing that for Gucci. a long time. Uh. It is actually from the roots of bamboo. Yeah, oh, that's from roots. That's why you see a lot of knots, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, Lueve is a um, Spanish brand. Uh, they they are very inspired by uh, Japanese basketry and they use the same kind of weaving and techniques, but uh, with leather. Mm. Okay. So, Interesting. yeah, there's, there's already some yeah. inspiration from bamboo basketry. And, and interesting because leather and bamboo, you say, have some similarity. And basically, one is a plant, a grass. And the other one is, uh, let's say, uh, skin, right? So uh, yeah. on one side, it's like not really skin and grass is, sounds like different, but at the end, it seems like it, there are some similarities. Yes, when you, the process of transforming bamboo into stripes and a skin into stripes is quite similar. You have mm -hmm. this... Uh, these different techniques of uh, cutting like uh, the width and cutting the, um, I forgot the height? larger uh, epicenter. <laughs> yeah, yeah, width and height. And height, or, or, thank you. Uh, this think. is kind of the same process, yeah. that, the same steps uh, to mm -hmm. transform. And, and you can also use uh, leather for weaving. And this is what I'm trying to do. Like I'm trying to learn different crafts and then use the technique of one with the material of the other or the aesthetic of one with the material of the other. This is also what I was doing in uh, Spain with the Esparto. Uh, I was learning Esparto craft and then I mixed it uh, with bamboo. It's exciting. I think this is something like you're kind of innovating here. Absolutely. And um, what can you share regarding your time in, in Japan with the Bamboo uh, Masters? How was that? How long were you there? What did you get to do? What was really very different than what you expected? Tell me. <laughs> yeah. So I stayed there a total of two years and three months. I was supposed <laughs> originally to stay for 10 months. So yeah, this was, so I did a double degree there. I did a one year of fashion school uh, in Bunka. Mm -hmm. 
is like this big uh, school of fashion. And um, I had to do like a thesis. And for my thesis, I research on what is the meaning of an artisan, a designer and artist in Japan compared to France. Because in France, I felt that there's like a kind of a separation between the uh, artist and the designer and the artisan. And in Japan, sometimes it's a little bit more uh, fluid and mixed. Mm -hmm. and so I already knew about bamboo basketry from an amazing exhibition, Branly, uh, Fondrelaire that uh, has uh, opened a bamboo basketry for many of the French people. And uh, yeah, I, I decided that I wanted to use this opportunity to actually meet the people and to interview them because this is how I like to do my project to actually have uh, this um, connection with people. And uh, I met with uh, four different artisans and artists and designer, like it's a very fluid definition as you can understand. Then I got along with uh, two of them. Uh, and one of them is Tanaka Kyokusho. He is uh, an artist uh, who at the, at the time lived in Tokyo and then now live in the countryside. And he is like almost 80. He is uh, quite famous in Japan for his uh, work. His, the emperor gave him a uh, decoration for his craft and yeah, he's quite um, well known. And uh, we had like really nice contact. He started teaching me when I was uh, already, when I was still in Tokyo. Then I moved for a year to learn about uh, leather work in a company that uh, used leather in a very interesting way. They always uh, mix it with different materials such as wood. I introduced them to bamboo and we made accessory together using bamboo and uh, and leather. And yeah, I learned, I learned a lot there uh, on, um, on leather. And then I asked, my uh, previous master from Tokyo, if he could have me as his apprentice. So that was kind of a big ask, uh, especially in Japan. He, uh, he accepted. So I moved to the very countryside, like uh, in the middle of the mountains. And for uh, about three months, every day, I went to his uh, place and I learned uh, all the different steps uh, for bamboo art. That must be a very unique experience then, right? <laughs> Definitely. It was a uh, life changing experience because from that experience I could do all my my project now I imagine yeah and like very few people had that the chance probably to to share that like three months with somebody who was like so deep in into a bamboo uh, artisan and design it from Japan right yeah yeah, and I'm cool. I, I'm very lucky because uh, I had uh, have a um, scholarship, not scholarship, like a uh, founding from uh, the Institut Français, who takes care of like uh, all this uh, art and, and cultural uh, residency and uh, project, and they they gave me this uh, grant so that I could do another project in Japan, and this is where I'm going to learn about the drying, but also doing another apprenticeship with uh, Takayuki. And this is going to be in the south of Japan, and I'm going to learn more about um, the basketry and new techniques, and yeah, so I can be a little bit more um, a higher level on my my knowledge. Awesome! And how do you uh, manage the Japanese language, or is everything in in English, or or are you w running around with a phone with a translator? <laughs> hmm. So yeah, of course, internet is making it very easy now but uh, from uh, french to japanese translators are not really good this is the problem i'm ha the problem not really a problem that i'm having every time i do a residency or i'm moving abroad this was the same in spain because i don't actually speak at all spanish so oh. <laughs> it's the same. Uh, but you know when you meet with people who work with the material and with their hands, you learn a different way and you communicate a very different way. So for me, the language was never a problem in the end. Like I always find a way to communicate with people and especially with artisans, we, we already have the same language. It's just that it's not with words, it's with our hands and our emotions, I guess. Interesting. Interesting. I like that. No, it's a little bit Japanese, but at the time when I arrived yeah. there and for the first year, not at all. Yeah, that's very different, I imagine, than the Latin languages. <laughs> yeah, it yeah. is. But it's not that hard to learn for speaking. Oh. For writing yeah. and for reading is different, but speaking is uh, yeah. kind of okay. <laughs> Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm sure it's better if you're able like to exchange things. I mean, two years is two years, right? It's uh, 
quite a, a time already there. Yeah. And next yeah. next time you're going for three months, you said. Yeah, I would like to yeah. stay more, but you know, it's tourist visa, so. Yeah, the challenges of the legal visa. Sorry. <laughs> uh, I in between France and Japan, they have a special like uh, a visa for people under thirty five. I think uh, you can stay a year. So this is something I'm like, keeping in the side. Like, okay, one day. Um, Plan B. Cool. Yeah. Well, uh, good luck there. I mean, sh sure, uh, a great um, approach to really uh, be there and, and, and learn the maximum exchange uh, ideas and, and stuff with uh, Japan because, yeah, else uh, Japanese uh, culture and French culture, maybe beside the, the like, uh, comic is, is very different, right? But comic, I think there is a connection there with the uh, comics uh, um, from, from Japan and, and, and France. Um, some kind of connection already mm. you know like the the what is it's it a um friends in japan yeah. many. in many different uh fields especially mm -hmm. i think france and japan both has this like uh preservation of the culture like they mm -hmm. they put quite a lot of effort Focus on, on their culture. like yeah. they're kind of proud of it as well so <laughs> uh, <laughs> So, yeah, I think we have that in common and we have this fascination for each other's uh, cultures. And uh, yeah, so it's kind of a love story for a long time now. Cool. <laughs> cool. And uh, then back to Europe. What are the main challenges you see regarding luxury art and craft, bamboo based in Europe, what what are the challenges there? So well, first, there is the, the one that we already talked about. There's this uh, availability of the material and especially mm -hmm. this technique of drying that uh, doesn't really exist now. But there is also a um, problem of uh, general knowledge about the bamboo. I think mm -hmm. not many people in France know that bamboo grows in France. Uh, <laughs> for them, That's something true. That's true. <laughs> So, um, yeah. yeah, I mean, for me, it was the same. Uh, when I was in Japan, I was not at all uh, aware of uh, what was available in France in terms of bamboo. So I could learn it when I came back, but really. So, yeah, I think we need to uh, promote the material more. Uh, yeah. And also, we we need to understand that this is not a weak material. So this is something that happened quite often when I'm my work. Everybody mm -hmm. is very surprised about what you can do with bamboo. Like, for example, I have this thing. This is very uh, flexible, but this mm -hmm. is actually very solid. Like, it doesn't break that easily. And that's why when you use it in some, I don't know, like, for example, here I have an example with uh, leather and uh, bamboo clips. This is actually quite strong as well. Like you can put things on top and it's okay. It doesn't break. But people have this vision of bamboo as something exotic and, and quite weak, which is yeah. not the case. So you can no. use it in many different fields. Yeah, this one as well. Like this is also flexible. Cool. Wow. You could do construction with that. Also, it would be too nice to, to bury. <laughs> wow. And that, that yeah. is also like for the bag or for interior design, it can be really interesting for also like a high fashion brand who wants to make a installation for the, their shops. This is also some interesting thing and it can be used instead of like um, plastic or uh, metal. And you can also like, yeah, it's, it's quite, it has this surface that is very smooth and uh, almost like a plastic skin. But then the inside is a little bit more uh, like fibers. So it's easier to like, I don't know, like put uh, uh, colors or glue something. So it has many different uh, different uh, options. And depending on what you want to do, you can use different type of bamboo, different part of the bamboo. Uh, you can use it as a whole. You can use it uh, as uh, stripes. Yeah, it's quite infinite. And that is something that I think in Europe people don't really see. No, they have no idea. Most of them. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We see so the you construction would... parts. Yeah, we mainly. see the construction part of the house, the big things, bamboo bicycle, and that's like, wow. And but sometimes then... we see the bamboo arts in uh, Japan, but then it's so high end, it's so beautiful and so like uh, exotic. Kind of, or... uh, so amazing that you don't really see that uh, happening in Europe. Like it's, uh, it's, it's too beautiful almost. Really. Yeah, yeah, you don't really identify. Yeah. 
um, so, this kind of work with Europe. So it's interesting because basically what you're telling me is that one of the biggest challenges right now in Europe is basically just the perception and understanding of what's possible with bamboo and how bamboo behaves that is kind of uh, not existing yet or or based on wrong uh, assumptions right and uh, yes. once yeah which is crazy because uh yeah um i mean the like the, this place in in france um they have been planting bamboo since the 60s or 70s la bambouserie la bambouserie uh, yeah exactly and like forever many types of bamboo with like very amazing qualities and um they really take really good care of it they have a lot of knowledge uh on how to grow a bamboo forest but uh yeah just yeah people it's don't just not... speak about it maybe we have to do the next podcast in french and uh, get some uh, more french people on board with yeah, bamboo maybe. that's the solution it comes with the people who can actually make things so it comes with the knowledge and that mm -hmm. is also something mm -hmm. that we need to work on like have maybe some schools or some class on bamboo weaving and um, mm -hmm. we already have it a little bit on uh, structures structures and architectures but the problem with uh, architecture is that you have a lot of norms that for now is not really meeting the um, uh, the organic material like it's it's yeah. very difficult Europe. It's still uh, the mindset well, of, of wood or something and, and then norms for bamboo, which you could use totally different and the norms are not adapted to the material. While exactly, for design yeah. and, and art and luxury and craft, you don't have all these norms. So you can actually use it like quite easily, but just nobody knows really how to to cut it and how to use it. So there is, I think, also something that needs to be done in terms of like uh, yeah, education and so maybe you will do a, a workshop in future in France with possible uh, partners regarding uh, possibilities of bamboo. Yeah, I'm doing that already, actually. <laughs> cool. Yeah. So cool. It's, uh, for now, it's on a platform called uh, We Can Do. Um, mm -hmm. It's available in France, in Paris, in my atelier, actually here. And uh, it's also some workshops in Spain. Um, so when I'm traveling, cool. I try organize it uh i think it's uh it's very interesting for people to understand how flexible bamboo is and what everything you can do with it so usually i'm teaching how to make like this kind of traditional bamboo baskets uh like a kind of like a small, uh bowl it's um it's a quite beautiful one and it's not that hard to to make so like in two three hours uh yeah. you can make and then, yeah, I think people after that uh, workshop, they understand bamboo way more. And especially they see that this is from a bamboo that is a few kilometers away and there is no not big transformation, just cutting it, uh, then using the knife that I show you, making stripes, and then you can make it. Yeah, I and mean, that's like key, like in everything, right? Kind of uh, education um, to to better understand, and then hopefully people will start uh, using it more because the the usabilities are kind of endless with bamboo. I mean, it, 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 you can transform it in almost anything. I just did a podcast not so long ago with a company in France regarding uh, continuous three D printing f bamboo fiber, and uh, I mean, wow. Uh, there's 3D printing uh, bamboo basically in in stripes, and it's for aerospace, for uh, ships, for for anything. The, um, yeah, this is just the beginning, probably. Who knows what's coming up in five, ten, twenty years from now, right? Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. There is also exactly the the really endless. Once we really understand that that we can use it totally differently, and 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 we can like do much more research. And, and testing because that's what it needs right we have to test what you're doing basically how will it uh, be if, if i paint with this or if i mix it with that etc etc so it's, it's a lot of testing and a lot of tedious work but at the end you can get amazing results so it's it's worth it regarding the tools lore i wanted to see so i mean you showed me the knife do you have other specific tools you're using for bamboo yeah. or yeah <laughs> It's a little bit heavy, so just give me a second. Okay, no rush. I hear something. Yes. So, mm. well, once you cut, maybe, maybe actually, I can show you how I cut the bamboo with the small strips, so you can. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm going to try to describe what I see. This is kind of a, a metal pitch or a, some metal uh, instrument that it looks heavy. It probably used to uh, fix bamboo there and 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 like um uh, like bend. Really? Um, Not really. Okay. <laughs> So this is something I already kind of uh, cut. Then I'm going to make it less uh, thick. Yeah. yeah. So I'm taking the the tool like that. Mm -hmm. And then split. You see? Okay. Yeah, you split it. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. nice. So Laura is like cutting a, a, a bamboo split of about a centimeter into half a centimeter in front of the camera. So for yeah. the ones which are not seeing the video, the, have you ever cut yourself with the knife? I mean, it's a huge knife. It's about 10, 15 yeah. centimeters long. I probably did, but it's okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so like, okay, okay, I'm going to stop here so that uh -huh. you can see the... So here I'm cutting. You shouldn't do it like that. Yeah. All right. I'm so this is cutting. the number strips. See? Mm -hmm. Quite thin. Yeah. You can make it thinner and thinner. Anyway, you do it as thin as you want with this um, mm -hmm. knife tool. But then if you're doing a lot of different uh, strips, it's never exactly the same thickness. So Absolutely. you want exactly the same thickness. So then you use this. So you have the mm. blades here. Yeah. yeah. And you put the bamboo in the water so that it's a little bit more uh, tender, tender. Yeah. And yeah, then you tender, put yeah. it in the oh okay get it it's it's meant to, it's to get like be... yeah okay, this is... okay. oh okay okay yeah and then you get like uh, the same size for every piece exactly. or the same yeah yeah yes. awesome awesome That's okay the... that mm -hmm. was the word that i couldn't find just a few minutes ago then with you use this okay that's so another have... tool yeah, you have two blades that you put in the wood. Mm -hmm. So you see, I have different uh, edges depending on Markings, how yeah. what, uh, my uh, stripes to be. And then, mm -hmm. so this is not really, I mean, it's kind of okay. Uh, but <laughs> so you have the strips. This is supposed mm -hmm. to be on the table. You put it here. And then yeah. here. Pass it through, huh? Yeah. It's going to be, because it's oh. supposed to be. So it's a little bit hard to show you like that, but. Here yeah. you can but I see it. it. I see it. You have to pass it through and basically cuts on yeah. both sides exactly the, exactly the size you want. And then you have the yeah. same for all uh, stripes and the same from the mm -hmm. beginning to the end because you know the bamboo, it's like uh, small on top and big on the bottom. Yeah. So the stripes are going to be the same. So you need this uh tools so that it's uh the same with from top to bottom. Wow, well, that but looks like a lot of work if I think about bigger. Um, art, you really have to use that a lot then <laughs> to get that yeah. uh, same yeah. size, so right? My my work and my designs and uh, what um, weaving that I make uh, is mm -hmm. for luxury craft mainly because it takes a lot of time because I have to prepare the material a lot. The weaving is actually not what is taking uh, so much time. It's really oh. to prepare the so that's also why it's interesting to have a mix of different material, like with this one that I showed you earlier. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. If you have a mix, then you have leather that is a little bit easier to um, mm -hmm. cut. And mm -hmm. so, yeah, the you have wow. surface, not uh, so much bamboo. And, yeah. This yeah, really does look very uh, intriguing, like this black mm -hmm. and, and, and yellow, quite the, the mix there. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I like it. But if you look at this one, which is 100% bamboo, then mm -hmm. it's not that flexible. Flexible, yeah, yeah, yeah. And, yeah, I and like have it. you tried, all... yeah? Yeah, <laughs> see, it's like organic drawings, right? That doesn't have to be like all straight. That's kind of beautiful. Yeah, yeah, We, I can see it very well, yeah. Wow. And is it is it very different to rattan? The bamboo stripes, or or uh, have you not used rattan, or have you? I've almost never used rattan. I use it because in the bamboo uh, basketry in Japan they do the finishing with rattan, like the very mm -hmm. small the top. Yeah, yeah. Because bamboo is not that flexible, but for making like big piece, uh, like full pieces in the rattan, I've never done it. But uh, 
I know that for cutting these like very small uh, strips of rata, we kind of use almost the same techniques. Uh, but I also know that it's available uh, to buy already cut. So probably there is a machine who cut it, while yep. bamboo not really. So there is some, but it's uh, it's not that precise and yeah, it depends. But I would say it has a lot of similarity, obviously, because this is um, weaving with vegetal material and uh, with the plants. Uh, but it's also, the, I would say one of the main difference between the two is that uh, rata to weave it, you use water, like humidity. Yeah, yeah. To make it more. Yeah. Well, bamboo, mm -hmm. you use heat. Yeah, so, it's really the other way around. Yeah. So yeah, when I'm using, like for example, when I showed you the sandal from the back, yep. this is with heat. So using in a, um, yep. a very artisanal, <laughs> and <laughs> yeah. uh, it's very nice. And in uh, France, I use um, uh, we call it the caper thermic, like a hot uh, gun. Okay, we have the flame out, coming out, and there you, you have the bamboo there. Yeah, I can show you. I have it here. I can use uh, this. Oh, yeah, yeah, the classic. Yeah, yeah, that's uh, the modern approach. But yeah, <laughs> basically. <laughs> yeah. I can control the degrees and yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's cool. Yeah, I mean, bending bamboo is, a, is another art. Even more if you have like entire pieces or, or stri stripes. Is, maybe a little bit easier when it's still like round with the nodes you can also bend a little bit but not so much um it's interesting yeah, and it's um, things yeah. uh, by bending them i have some mm -hmm. other examples as well but it's like yeah you can do very fine and precise uh bending and okay. it's not breaking and it stays uh the same for a long time it doesn't really that's move. really amazing right if you think of the material which is like metal. pretty yeah yeah just that it, it's it's better because metal if it's too humid you get corrosion and the mm -hmm. bamboo basically uh will not have that issue so it's it's, it's uh right. yeah yeah if it's right right exactly you also <laughs> mentioned before you were at a few expositions and i think one of the last one was the one in germany the european bamboo expo and i think you were one of the very first who are into luxury art and, and craft there uh, exposing uh, things transformed from bamboo so how how was the experience what can you share it was great it was great i got a lot of attention to be honest <laughs> it's like cool. My first, uh, kind of the first um, e expo that uh, you see was my uh, my presentation. Your stand. So cool. A lot of people, uh, which was really nice because everyone was interested in bamboo. So that's a little bit new for me because <laughs> otherwise all my other experiences was more about like design and, and uh, sustainability. Uh, so yeah, I think, and I think this is, I mean, this is kind of, uh, to say like uh like not many people do that uh kind of um using bamboo for uh, art and design but at the same time there is a lot of similarities with architecture and the way you weave yeah. and uh, how you make a structure so i think people can understand but still be surprised so yeah that was a really nice uh really nice uh expo and everyone also was had really interesting projects so yeah it was uh, it, for me it was really great experience well, and you were there all the three days or or uh, how long were you at the yeah. expo yeah. yeah yeah i was cool. there all the time <laughs> wow awesome and and uh, you mentioned before also right now uh, you are in an art gallery in in paris um are yeah, you so there I, with yeah or i was there uh so i the exhibition is uh, for two weeks so it's until saturday and the exhibition mm -hmm. basically exhibit the the pieces i made when i was in madrid so i was mm -hmm. in an art residency for three months in casa de velasquez which is a french institute in spain and my project was to do collaboration with the local uh, sketchy artisans and show their craft as well as uh, show all the potential of uh, local bamboo so iberian bamboo in um, in art uh, and uh, craft 
So yeah, this is exhibited now in uh, Paris. I have another exhibition for one day in the, on the 14th of September uh, near um, Chateauroux uh, in the Chateau de la Lienne. Uh, that, that's a like very so. big, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's, I think it's a nice location. And they have a very huge uh, park where they have uh, arboretum, uh, which is like a lot of uh, species of trees, and they have also different species of bamboo. So I'm kind of looking forward to go there. I'm probably going to do a residency there as well in the future. And I have uh, an exhibition in, um, in Gaete Lyrique in, in Paris, uh, just one day as well, on the 18th of October. That will also showcase uh, some of the pieces I made in Spain, so using bamboo and esparto. Uh, and uh, yeah, so I have this residency in uh, in Japan, which will probably, so it started in January for two, three months, and it will probably end with an exhibition. Not sure yet uh, when, where. Uh, and there is also the event with Asib uh, coming up, the second symposium on bamboo. And mm -hmm. I will, will be in Lisbon, and I will do a workshop. Cool, cool. Okay, so you do a workshop how to weave and bend bamboo for uh, art. Exactly, I can show you what you can do with me at the workshop. Mm -hmm. um, I have it in there. I mean, so this is the, um, the basket I was telling you about. This basket is, a, is like a traditional basket, and this is what I'm teaching during the workshops. Mm. So this is what I'm so doing cool. in my academia and also in some universities and uh, with uh, events of ATSI. Cool, wow, so, this is like, there are a few stripes there or is it just one stripe? You have eight here and eight here. Oh, so it's 16 and, stripes. Uh, yeah, and yeah. what I do is that it's half skin. You can mm -hmm. see the green. This is yeah. actually, so from uh, Bambus Red uh, this is the uh, Philostachis uh, nigra enonis, and uh, this got uh, this flowered um, for like Le I think a few months ago, so now it's not, not available wow. anymore. <laughs> like, yeah, now more... it's gone for a while. <laughs> yeah. Which is sad because that was my favorite, but it's okay, I'll find another one. <laughs> um... <laughs> That's how it works when it flowers, yeah. it, it flowers, right? Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, so you have, this is with the skin and this is the inside of the bamboo. So you also have this like kind of uh, color, um, mm, uh, like a uh, rust, yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. And it's super strong, right? You can like press it and everything and it has some flexibility, <laughs> but it's uh, a light wave. Wow, yeah. Yeah. Wow. And yeah. it still has, yeah, some flexibility. Interesting. Yeah. And what is the main use? Like do, uh, in, in Japan, do they use it like for, for fruits or carrying and stuff? Are they bigger normally or is that the size? This one, I've never really seen it in a Japanese household. But what I've seen in bamboo, it's mainly vases for uh, ikebana. Okay. It's a floral yeah. arrangement. Mm -hmm. So it's mainly Flowers for that. And, yeah. You have many different yeah. uses. You also have this, uh, this uh, whip for... Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, for clear. like matcha, this is also, this is also bamboo and it's also handmade. Yeah, you have different tools using bamboo, but it's less and less uh, common because now with plastic and yeah, so yeah. it's more like the collection. It's interesting. I mean, this is like probably yeah, with all the plastic now and and super cheap, this is like really luxury now to know that this is something a unique piece and made out of natural giant grass. Pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, well, I mean, this has been pretty enriching so far, um, Laura. Um, I learned, uh, again, a lot of things regarding bamboo. And um, I don't know, do you have any <clears throat> closing words for the podcast? Uh, maybe uh, your website, we could mention your website, right? Is Laura um, Julien. Exactly, laurejulien.com. I also have uh, Instagram. It's Laure, uh, I don't know how to say in English, the tiret du bas, the... the um, yeah, underscore. Underscore, exactly. Underscore. <laughs> yeah. So, love, <laughs> yeah. Julien, 
underscore. Also have LinkedIn. So yeah, don't hesitate to ask me if you need anything for like, I don't know, it can be from a workshop to interior design to like accessory design to like more like artistic piece or uh, yeah, any anything that you spambu for design, art and, cra- and high hand craftsmanship. Um, I'm very well, I'm very happy to uh, look at your project and maybe we can do something. And anyway, I think this is very important to uh, share about the different possibilities using bamboo. And I hope uh, that we can do that all together and uh, support the use of bamboo in Europe. That's amazing. I'm really um, happy that you're you're uh, focusing there on that. I think also it's something important to, to continue with the research and, and developing the, the use of bamboo. And if, if Europe can go ahead with that, that would for sure help there too and, and have more bamboo planting in Europe in future. So uh, France is uh, already, I think, one of the leading countries. We have Portugal, Greece, and so on. But uh, we need more bamboo. So uh, anything you do, uh, I think uh, there is going to help there. So really important and uh, thumbs up. Pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Well, um, Laura, um, thank you very much for your time, all your insights and, and all the information you shared here. I hope it inspires other people to also have a, a better look at bamboo, try to understand bamboo and what they can do, how you can transform bamboo because uh, possibilities are quite unlimited. Also, if you haven't yet, do subscribe on Think Bamboo on YouTube and Instagram and uh, TikTok. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Thank you very much. (laughs) Thank you, Laura. Take care. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.